Kurt Cobain didn't leave a will. Melanie Morgan reports from affiliate KOMO in Seattle. He once slept under a hometown bridge while trying to establish his musical career. But by the time Nirvana achieved musical fame, Kurt Cobain was a very rich man. New court papers just made public show that along the way, Cobain did not take the time to file a will. That leaves his rock singer widow, Courtney Love, executor of the estate, and his one-year-old daughter, Frances, a beneficiary. The Cobain estate is said to be worth about $1.2 million at the time of his suicide. Melanie Morgan for ABC News, Seattle. And finally, more Kurt Cobain dissing this week. This time from Skid Row's lead singer, Sebastian Bach, through his publicist, Suzanne Crane. This is an open letter regarding Kurt Cobain's death from Skid Row's Sebastian Bach. The following letter is quoted verbatim. I find the comparisons between Kurt Cobain and John Lennon misleading to the young people in the world today who may not have heard Lennon's music. Both men were incredibly gifted songwriters, but as inspirational figures, the two could not be more distant. John Lennon sang of peace, starting over, going cold turkey, and the world living as one. Kurt Cobain sang of apathy, lithium, and just may have inspired a generation to think that suicide is the only way out. When Nirvana came out such a short time ago, they were supposed to represent a reaction against rock's traditional values. They spoke of having morals about yourself, your sexuality, politics, and the world around you. Then why is it that Cobain decided that his fans were more worthy of his life than his own daughter? As I sit here holding my two sons listening to Beautiful Boy by John Lennon, I feel heartbroken. For Francis Bean, suicide is the ultimate act of selfishness, megalomania, cowardice. John Lennon was a father, a man. Kurt Cobain killed himself before he had the chance to become either. That's uh, Suzanne Crane speaking uh, for Sebastian Bach uh, on the death of Kurt Cobain. All right, your phone calls, area code 310-437-KNAC, 714-534-KNAC. Back to the phones. Good morning, who's this? Hi, this is Angela. Hi, Angela, how are you? I'm, I'm okay. I'm calling regarding, um, I just heard Sebastian, and I did what he was saying, man. Uh, what I have to say is that I think I think what, what, uh, what Kurt did, it, it's a cop-out. I do. And it's harder. It is so much harder. Okay, I get really upset talking about this. It's harder to live life, you know? It is harder to live this life. I asked my husband. I said, man, you know, uh, uh, do you think it was easy to put a, a gun to your head? I mean, gosh, does he have guts? And my husband looked at me and said, are you for real? It's harder to go through it, you know, to go through life. And I just, I believe that he, I'm, I believe that he, you know, he just couldn't handle it. And uh, he idolized heroin addicts. I mean, so I hear. And uh, every, uh, it's, heroin is really, really big right now and in, in Hollywood. And I just, I think it's disgusting. I mean, from like Johnny Thunders to, to uh, I can go on and on and on. With, and I just, I think it's a disgusting drug. And um, I just think Kurt had a lot of problems, you know? And, and uh, hold on one second. And the other thing is, you know, I heard, I, I'm from Hollywood, and I heard that uh, Courtney was seeing uh, this guy from the Lemon Heads and, and he was deeply in love with her and I, it's not her fault but I just I believe in commitment and he was just it seems like he was just really weak and quiet a really weak quiet person and I just wish that somebody was there I really do because I heard she was in Los Angeles with the guy from the Women Heads I mean an electrician had to find him that, that, that's just too much you know the saddest thing is is that you know they, the baby okay that's what Bass was saying Sebastian was saying yeah. leaving the baby behind and um, to close here, just all you listeners, please stay off heroin, man, because it's, it's really becoming trendy. And it's not good. It's really not. I appreciate your, your thoughts this morning. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Good morning. Who's this? Hi, Mike. This is Duffy from Huntington Beach. Hi, Duffy. How you doing, man? Well, I'm a little bit perturbed. As a matter of fact, I'm disgusted. You know, about a week ago on the morning show at uh, Thrasher's morning show, 
You played a tape of Ted Nugent commenting about the unfortunate suicide of uh, Kurt Cobain. And uh, it was actually a tape that was done on Z-Rock, which is syndicated. Are you familiar with that? Right, exactly. Well, I hope you never play that again. I was utterly disgusted and revolted to hear that you played again a tape of a jealous Ted Nugent tantrum about the unfortunate suicide of Kurt Cobain. You know, it's not enough that Ted has to taunt a widow and an orphan with the sad shortcomings of the late husband and father, but Ted's got to insensitively insult Kurt's wife, Courtney Love, and call her a slut. That is the most cruel and ugly assault on someone in great emotional distress I have ever heard. You know, congratulations, Ted Nugent. I'll bet it really makes you feel like a man to kick a widow when she's down. So we should do what's politically correct. So you're crying out loud. He calls her a slut. Who, who does he think he is? You know, Ted Nugent's divorced, Mike. And you know why he got divorced? Because he was playing around. So you know something? It's that same old double standard. And you know what? You allowed him to stand up there and you played it. We allowed you to speak your mind as well. If there's one thing that this program has always stood for, it's been free speech. And free speech, no matter how disgusting it might be, is still the foundation of this country. Well, okay, then let my final point be, anybody who heard that should have been offended because it crossed the border of bad taste. Well, let me Ted tell you... Nugent should be judged by that. Let me tell you, Duffy, that we received an awful lot of calls in support of what Ted had to say. Well, you know something, I like, will say that. Well, you know something, like I supported what Ted said about drugs. You know, it's one thing to say that drugs are bad. And I can understand that Ted was saying, hey, you know, drugs have destroyed a lot of people's lives, and he's got a point. But you know what he did? He confused that message with an ugly attack on somebody and it muted his strong message and you know something i have no respect for him now every time he opens up his mouth like this he sounds like a sexist cretin a lot of people will agree with you on that and on many points i i will agree with you but i will never squelch his right to say what he wants to say <sighs> well i'm going to hold him accountable for what he says and i think that's the bottom line mike you're right you're right he should be held accountable. And that was but he ugly. should not be squelched. It was ugly, Mike. And you allowed it, and you brought it on the program, and made it almost, you almost sanctioned it by doing that. Well, that's your interpretation. Duffy, I do appreciate your call and your thoughts. Okay. All right, man. Bye. See ya. I am going to play the Ted Nugent cut, and I'm also going to play some other cuts that uh, were follow-ups. I don't happen to agree with everything Ted says on this, but uh, this is uh, in response to a call that he re received on Z-Rock in regards to the Kurt Cobain thing. Um, this, is the, this is the cut that everyone says I shouldn't play. Well, we're going to play it, and then we're going to follow it up with some, some uh, cuts that um, kind of show the other side of it, but uh, I'll let you be the judge. I'm writing a song about Kurt right now. It's called I'm Surprised He Didn't Miss. <laughs> no, I don't write songs about maggots and cowards. Yeah, I got to tell you, Edward, you know, you know what I do uh, two or three times a year? I meet with uh, young kids who are dying of leukemia, and they didn't ask for it. I meet with kids that are dying of horrible, debilitating diseases that they didn't ask for. And their last request is to spend a day with Ted Nugent and you know, maybe with my family. So we bring them out to my ranch. We spend the day with them. And then they die. You don't think those kids would have liked to have switched the health that Kurt had for a week or two, do you? Kurt Cobain was the perfect example of the toxic underbelly of disgusting denial that permeates our society today. He was a weenie. I'm glad he's dead. And the kid, Kurt Cobain's daughter, has only one hope to have a decent life. And that's that if that toxic slut of a heroin-addicted mother would die, so maybe the baby would get in the hands of someone who cares and can actually be a loving parent. Prompted by uh, this particular interview about his uh, comments uh, uh, made... Uh, earlier in the week regarding Kurt Cobain's recent suicide, shock jock Howard Stern called Nugent, who's hosting his own uh, nationally syndicated morning show this week, and the debate was broadcast live on the program. Here's how that debate went. Kurt Cobain 
is a guy who had a lot of problems. Yeah, you don't think any of them were self-induced, do you? The Howard guy couldn't Robin, deal with life. Howard and Robin, God bless you, my friends, but I just spent a few days with a guy named Jeff Gilbert. He's one of the editors for Guitar World magazine, and Jeff had spent a lot of quality time. He knew Kurt and the Nirvana guys long before they reached this big success. Yeah. And he said he watched Kurt cower and end up injecting heroin into his veins and become a bad, self-imposed, exiled person. Damn, that but if that's because he's... That is not a problem, my friend. It that is. is. That is Wait a, a self-induced uh, state. The guy... But, Ted, who, who in their who, right who mind would sit there heroin? injecting heroin when they're on a career roll like he was? Nugent went on to defend his calling Kurt Cobain a coward for killing himself. You know the bottom reason why I have this anger and hatred for this kind of waste? It is a defense mechanism I have. When Jimi Hendrix and Bon Scott and Keith Moon laughed at me, ridiculed me, I, these guys were my heroes. They laughed at me because I wouldn't smoke dope and drink whiskey with them. And Jimmy thought I was a punk because I wouldn't take LSD. I have a defense mechanism that says, you people that purposely destroy your life are punks and I hate you. Boy, Ted's upset. Right, Ted, you I get weight. You know what, Ted? I got to tell you what the... My life and Ted, I Ted, 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 listen to me. My life. Ted, listen to me. And you have a problem with me having a defense mechanism? Yes. You, kiss you listen. Ass. You kiss my ass. <laughs> Ted pointed out this is National Suicide Prevention Week. You know what I just did? I made a plea to the Courtney Loves and those people out there that are like her and the people around them. I challenge the people of this country, find the people in your life that look like they're depressed. No Please way. Please go up to them and talk to them. <laughs> no oh, way. Worse. Don't talk to them. No, I'm not talking to depressed people. <laughs> Ted, you do that. I'm not doing that. And there's the whole story for those that uh, weren't aware of it. Area code 310-437-KNAC, 714-534-KNAC. All right, let's go to line three. Good morning. Who's this? This is Nicole. Nicole? Yeah. Okay, Nicole, you're on. I just have to defend Ted. I, I have to admit, the first time I heard about Kurt Cobain's death, it was, I didn't know what happened, so I was kind of sad. And then when I found out how he died, I, all I can think of what an idiot this guy is. So Ted said he was glad he was dead, and his heroin addict wife needed to be dead. She doesn't need to be dead. She needs to do something to her life before she commits suicide. She says he's stupid for committing suicide. Well, she's stupid for not seeing that he was. I mean, the man sounded like a major manic depressive. And I've had so many friends of mine in my life, personally, that have tried to commit suicide and that actually have committed suicide. And it's the most disgusting thing that somebody can do to themselves. I mean, I think about my life. I'm 22 years old. And how many times I've seen people try to commit suicide and how many times that it's crossed my mind for about two seconds and then I get over it real quick. This man was thinking about it for a long time. People that were close to him had to have known that he was thinking about it for a long time. And nobody did anything to help this guy. He goes into rehab centers to try to help himself and nothing helps. Because he was addicted to heroin. I mean, he needed to get addicted to something else. And it's called life and it's wonderful. And nobody should be praising why this guy died. Nobody should. Because it's horrible. And if it starts anything where people start committing suicide because Kurt Cobain did, that's pathetic. And that's what, I mean, the word has to get out that the way he died is disgusting. Not the way he died was uh, sad. I mean, it was disgusting. Nicole, I appreciate your thoughts. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. It should be also noted, uh, this issue of Rolling Stone magazine, the one that's on the uh, newsstands now, is a... Tribute to Kurt Cobain, and I think that uh, if you read those articles, you'll really realize what a troubled, troubled man uh, Kurt was, um, according to the accounts in Rolling Stone magazine.